the same team home or away. The Dodgers have quite a lineup. The Brewers have the bullpen. So that'll be big tonight at Dodger Stadium, one of the really refined, classy places in Major League Baseball where they don't throw beer at you uh, like in New England. With that, via the Coward Global Satellite Network, one of my favorite guys, almost a decade and a half in the NFL, a Super Bowl champ, a pro bowler, and a buddy of mine, Trent Dilfer. Okay, you watched last night. You and I have talked ad nauseum about Brady. Let's talk Mahomes. Like, listen, New England did a good job forcing him out of the pocket more than Tom was forced out of the pocket. Do you worry a little bit with Mahomes, though, Trent? That there's a lot of hero plays here, a lot of out of the pocket. And generally, over a course of 15 years, you got to make hay in the pocket, not superstar plays out of the pocket. What do you make of Mahomes? I would be concerned if the bulk of his work this year hadn't been from the pocket. Now, we're a highlight educated football audience. So, what most of the country is seeing is his spin around touchdown pass. They saw him last night in prime time, the highlights showing him do the stuff out of the pocket. But he's played the bulk of the season with great rhythm, great timing from the pocket. So, uh, because of that, last night, uh, I didn't think he resorted back to what he's most comfortable doing. I think he was forced to do a lot of that by a highly aggressive New England Patriots game plan. Uh, they really took some chances uh, coverage-wise, blitz-wise. They played they played casino blitz, which is a cover zero, bringing everybody uh, four or five times. Uh, they brought extra rushers, played man behind it. Uh, it was obvious that the New England coaching staff didn't think they could just line up and play coverage against this player and this team, and and they were right. I mean, Kansas City went in there and put up 40 in Foxborough <laughs> with two turnovers and only 53 plays. So, again, I think the Patriots are and still are the, the class of the NFL for a bunch of reasons. Um, but I was more impressed with Kansas City last night for their ability to only get 53 plays on the road with that kind of crowd noise and put up a 40-piece. Uh, on the Patriots. Pretty impressive. Listen, you um, grew up uh, Fresno, Bay Area. You watch Montana, you know Brady. Mm -hmm. there, there, mm -hmm. it, sometimes I watch Tom in the two-minute drill, and Trent, I, some of it's not coaching. I almost think some of it is an inner confidence. It's You're either built to be good in two minutes or you're not. Brady is so good at it. I, I Maybe it's all the years. Maybe it's coaching. But you were around this league. There are guys who, when it gets noisy, it gets quiet. Yeah. Tom's the best I've ever seen at that. Is that, is that my being too hyper on that? It's just, it's almost like he was built for two-minute football. I don't think I can say any better. I, I think there are just certain guys in every sport that their minds get quieter, the busier the environment is, the more chaotic, the more stressful. Uh, they find that gear where they can get quiet, they can get calm. Um, they're supremely confident. Uh, they've been playing the game in their mind the whole night, the whole day, so they're prepared for that moment. I thought Chris Collins were did a great job last night uh, talking about how they were being very stubborn with the run. They were forcing Kansas City into some looks, and at some point, Tom Brady was going to take advantage of it to Gronkowski. Sure enough, play action, backside, play that he audible to to get Gronk open. Uh, he audible to the play to get Gronk, Gronk down the sideline to put the game away. Uh, he was just fantastic. And and the thing that doesn't have the same sex appeal, but to a football dork like myself, I thought was masterful as well, was how he handled the run game. This is obviously a New England team that wants to have more balance this year. This is not the spread them out option route to Edelman team. This is an offense that wants to run the football. They want to be physical. They want to use the size of that offensive line, which they have for the first time in years. They want to lean on you. They have multiple backs they can give the ball to. And then they want to be opportunistic in the passing game with Tom Brady and strike you. What he did in the run game, audibly into good looks for his runners, adjusting the formations, adjusting the, the run packages, is as good as I've seen in a long time. Uh, by the way, uh, you know you know I like Darnold, and it was more about traits. He's a bigger, stronger kid than Baker, but I like his traits. Uh, I, don't, I don't like the nonsense. I think he's built to fail. Win, fail, same personality. Touchdown, pick, same personality. I like that. Baker, I can see two guys. I see plant the flag guy, head down guy. So I tend to like Darnold more, plus he's bigger and stronger. What did you see from Baker? Because Baker didn't have a very good day yesterday. Is there anything that concerns you with Baker? Yes, yeah, anything that concerned me coming into this draft. And, and we're, I worked hard on this draft. I've known these kids forever. And, 
and really wanted to give balanced analysis going into this year's draft. And Sam was my number one guy for a couple of reasons. Number one, he has that vibe to him that makes everybody around him feel better. Good, bad, in different situations, you're going to feel better when Sam Darnold's around. Uh, he has that every intangible trait you're looking for. I think physically he can get away with more bad things happening around him. Uh, a pocket collapsing in the middle. He's big, strong enough, athletic enough to manipulate that and still make throws. I think his downfield accuracy, when you look at his entire career at USC, was phenomenal. Uh, the ability to push the ball all over the football field into tight windows, too, not just wide open receivers. Uh, those are all the reasons I thought Sam would be great. Now, I think Baker is going to be a good quarterback. Uh, but me and you talked about this a few weeks ago. Baker's got to decide what kind of quarterback he's going to be because he's got a choice now. And you're seeing the bad decision come to fruition when he tries to be a playmate, when he tries to do too much, when he's not willing to give up on a play bad things happen. He is not a good enough athlete to be a full-time playmaker. He is a guy that must play the game like Drew Brees has played it for years. On time, from the middle of the pocket, before it gets muddy in there. The Cleveland Browns have to do a good job of building their offensive line like the New Orleans Saints did with Drew Brees, where they built it center guard guard. They were as concerned with the tackles. Baker needs a clean interior of the pocket he needs to play on time, and he can be deadly. He can absolutely slice and dice you. But what you're seeing is the same thing you happen, you saw happen against Georgia last year. When you're able to rush Baker in the middle, get him moving laterally or moving backwards, his brain writes checks, his body can't cash. He tries to make plays that physically he is unable to make, and they turn into interceptions. That's what you saw yesterday. I think Baker can fix it but it's on him to decide how he's going to play the game. Trent Dilfer joining us. I, I said I've, I've, there's nine teams that I look at, five in the AFC, four in the NFC, that I think are good enough, personnel, coaching, quarterback, to string together multiple wins in a row, get to a Super Bowl, win or lose, who knows, but get there. That's part of it. And then there's two teams, Carolina and Green Bay. I need a couple more weeks. Uh, that's that's where I that's kind of how I feel today. That I feel the Patriots, Chiefs, Rams, Eagles, Steelers, Saints, Ravens, Chargers, Vikings. They can string together multiple wins against good teams. Panthers, Packers, darn close. Give me two more weeks. Any pushback on that? Do you see teams I don't? Are there teams you don't like or do like that I don't have? You know, I, I saw the list earlier today. I wanted to push back on you. I really wouldn't. Maybe I would take the Steelers out, put the Texans in, but I, I don't. It's probably too early to tell on either. I think what's interesting about this, though, is a bigger conversation around the teams that most likely would be your favorites. And that would be the Patriots, obviously. I would put the Eagles in there because they did it last year and they're starting to round into form, and Carson's only going to get better. And then obviously the Chiefs and the Rams. Of those four teams, Three of them are playing with quarterbacks on their first contract. Yeah. Therefore, they're allowed to spread the money around and have a better 53 than these teams that have so much money invested in their quarterback and maybe a quarterback and the alpha receiver. It also makes me admire how the Patriots have done it even more because they've been paying Tom Brady a lot for a lot of years. And they haven't drank in the Kool-Aid of going and having to pay other signature players too much to keep them. Um, they've been able to spread the wealth around. They have value at receiver. Uh, they look for value at every position. Trent Brown getting him to become their left tackle is yeah. one of the great offseason moves we've seen. Uh, it just makes me continue to say they are so much better than everybody else at looking at it from 30,000 feet and managing a quarterback that eats up a bulk of their salary cap, where these other teams panic. And once they pay the quarterback, they feel they have to pay the receiver. Then they feel they have to pay the running back or the corner. And there's just not enough money to be spread around until they take the quarterback out of the salary cap and put him aside and say, yeah, there's going to be a salary cap on quarterbacks, but they're not going to count to the rest of the cap. Then you're going to see more examples of the Chiefs, the Eagles, and the Rams that say, hey, we did pretty well in the draft getting the quarterback. Let's take advantage of this in this four-year window and go pay a bunch of other dudes and make a year or two run at this uh, to try to get to the championship game because you're not going to see I, the, what I don't like about the Packers and the Saints and some of those other teams, the Steelers, is their their 53s aren't that good. They have a lot of sizzle, the guys they're paying, but they don't have a lot of depth. 
And that guy coming in playing the dime corner isn't very good. And eventually he's going to get exposed. Finally, I, I was going to say something today. I, I told my staff as we were preparing for the show, I said, Todd Gurley may be the best running back I've ever seen. Now, I know that's crazy, <laughs> but he's he's faster than Emmett. He's bigger than Marshall Falk. He can catch better than Adrian Peterson. And I'm like, God, he is so good. And then my staff said, oh, Trent's going to push back on that. So what are you going to tell me when I say Todd Gurley looks as good as any running back I've ever seen? I think he's fantastic, but I don't know if he's the best running back in L.A. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think Melvin Gordon is as good as Todd Gurley. I think they're the two best backs in football, and they're both in L.A. When you watch the Chargers play, and you watch how he is also the centerpiece of their offense, and how many people he makes miss in open space, and then his ability to accelerate into contact when it is a scrum. Uh, I don't know. I think it's either or, Todd Gurley or Melvin Gordon, but Todd gets all the attention right now, as he should, because the Rams are undefeated. But people need to start paying attention to the San Diego Chargers and Melvin Gordon. They have a great quarterback. Guy's been great for a long time. But now they've surrounded him with a defense that can get after you. They can get the ball back for you. An offensive line that's better has been in years. A great runner. And now they've established that other perimeter threat to Keenan Allen. They really have all the pieces. I think in the AFC, you have Pats, uh, Chiefs, and then I think it's Chargers. Trent Dilfer, great talking to you on a Monday, man. I got smarter. Thanks, buddy. Always fun, pal. See you. All right, Trent Dilfer, decade and a half, got a Super Bowl ring, as you saw behind him, that beautiful trophy. Joy Taylor with the news. No, 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 no. Heard on the news. This is the Herd Line News. <sighs> so last night's game was...